Marissa here. We are live again. We are going live a lot more than we used to, which I'm really loving, I have to say. So I'm going to call this We Go Live Wednesday <laughs> because there for a while we were recording and it would take an awful lot of time to get uh, the recordings out. And so we just decided we're going to start going live. I've got eight different interviews today. We're starting out from London, England, or thereabouts. Uh, um, uh, with a lovely lady that I've known for quite some time and she does such good around the world and she helps companies do the same corporate, but not only she's going to tell us about that and the impact that these companies can have for social good. Without further ado, I'm going to bring on Nolene Mariah and there she is. Hello, coming. It looks like it's chilly over there. Is it cold? It is cold, yes. And I had a little bit of an issue with my heating this morning. That's the oh, no. very warm looking get up. Well, yeah. there you are. So that's why we've got the the, uh, the furry hat it looks on. Like I'm and... the Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> so good to see you. So great to see you. you Listen, too. Arlene, before we get started, I was hoping that you could give us a little bit of your backstory because I think it really warrants telling. And it's it's very telling as to you know where you can be in childhood. Uh, I love the rags to riches stories and then where you can be some years later with a lot of hard work and tenacity. So can you give us a little bit about of your backstory when you were when you were living in uh, South Africa as a little girl? Yeah, sure. Um, so I was born uh, during apartheid in South Africa. And um, during the time, uh, you were actually legally a lesser person if you weren't white which is an interesting concept. Um, so grew up during South Africa, uh, we were very poor, um, but not as badly off as others. Um, and the interesting thing was that we never actually felt like there was a difference between us and the people around us because so many were in the same situation. Uh, we were just kids, it was just our experience. And um, you know, a couple of, a, a couple of quick sort of uh, side stories. The one is, um, and I recall this so vividly, my older brother and I, and how we used to try to find where the neighbors' chickens had laid their eggs so that we could steal wow. them for dinner. Wow. And yes, yeah, so I'm a thief. <laughs> <laughs> You're a survivor. I'd prefer to call you a survivor. Don't <laughs> Go right ahead, go right ahead. And um, yeah, and I guess, you know, I was always sort of thinking of the long game because then we didn't steal the chickens, we just stole the eggs, so. <laughs> Which was already very hard, what was very good of you to do. I leave the chicken yeah. and just take a few eggs. I met you uh, some years ago when you were uh, very, You, I know that you're very, very passionate about women and women's empowerment. And I was wondering if you'd give us uh, a little bit of an idea as to what is it that impassioned you so much about women? Yeah, so uh, coming from the background that I did and being from quite a conservative culture, um, you know, there are sort of additional constraints on women aside from just having to juggle motherhood and, you know, work right. life and, and the, you know, so many of the institutional boundaries that there are, there were additional, you know, societal and cultural boundaries. Um, and for me, it was always about trying to improve the situation initially just for you know, my family and my friends and the people that I knew and education and learning more and being able to get access to more people was how I saw that I could do that. Right. Um, and thankfully was able to get to university as apartheid ended um, on a scholarship and working three jobs and have always then really wanted to continue to make a difference. And women, as I know it and have experienced it, uh, are the ones who really drive community. You know, everything that they do is for the benefit of their family and the larger family, which is the community around them. Right. So Absolutely. That, that's always been a driving force. Driving force for sure. So I know that you uh, you started your own consulting business and this business, um, I wanted to understand from you, what are some of the businesses and the industries that are in your portfolio in the moment and how exactly it is that you're helping them? Yeah. So uh, the consulting company is really, you know, 
because I love people and I love business and it comes quite naturally. And I've got a portfolio of my, my own companies across industries and consulting helps me keep my head in the game, but also allows for me to increase impact. Um, so the consulting that we do ranges and it's the, you know, run of the mill standard stuff, strategy operations, you know, startup growth, sort out phases, expanding into new territories. But what really moves me is the work that I do around impact. So the impact consulting work that I do, where we look at companies who, of course, you know, the, the aim is to be profitable and that's what we work toward because you can do more from a position of strength. And strength is often finances and, and it's what you do with those finances that counts and how it is that you actually do business. So it's about right. business for good. Um, so we work around the areas of impact consulting. We look at how uh, people can align with sustainable development goals and be more sustainable, how they measure impact, uh, how, how they can complete B Corp assessments uh, and certification and the meaningful impact that they can have in society. So starting you know, within the company, all of the processes, working with people, uh, working with communities, how, you know, what their governance is like, what their finances are like, um, and, and what they're doing for greater good. Right. Uh, and, and it's not always in the ways that people think, you know, so it's not always uh, just, oh, you know, we're donating towards specific causes or uh, we've got this in our policy and this is what we aim toward. It's, it's actually, you know, longer term and how it, it becomes fundamentally sort of entrenched in a business. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's one of the things that we do. How is it? I you, how is it that it's measurable? How is it that when a yeah. company decides to go down a certain path, that they actually know that that is the path? It worked. It was successful, and it was and and it's measurable. How is that? How do you go down? How do you do that? Yeah. Um, so this is one of my major bugbears with this specific industry, um, and as an example. If you, th there are so many companies doing amazing work out there. There are so many individuals who are doing things for good. Um, but when it comes to reporting, it becomes really difficult because, for example, there are 10 different reporting, main reporting frameworks that you can use. Within them, there's like more than 175 indicators that you use. And within those, all of the responses can be different. Um, so, one of the major things in the industry is looking at how do we create a baseline because it makes it very difficult and people just don't report because it's too much of a mission for them to do so. Right. Um, but one of the things, you know, there, so there are a number of different indicators as to how people are doing and what you should be measuring. Um, and some of them, you know, some of them are, are simple things that you could do, like, um, you know, uh, uh, the people who are employed by you or volunteering with you, what are the, the different policies you have in place and do you actually follow those policies? You know, are you paying everyone at least a minimum wage or is it that you're, you know, into the freelancing gig economy and most of the people are sort of below market rate, but it's not captured because you know it's not captured it's just right. you know, a one-off fee um when you're looking at sourcing products where are you sourcing from is it local how diverse are the you know people within your organization and your suppliers um and, and in terms of impact in the community companies can assess at different points in time so you can assess sort of straight off the bat when you start implementing things like right you know, you, you're you part of your, if you're a manufacturing plant, for example, part, part of the, the food that you produce is going toward a local community. That's very quick, easy impact. Um, but longer term, what is the impact of that? And you can have more sort of longitudinal assessments. Right. Um, as so an it's example. Not always, it's not always, because that was the next question. So then it's yeah. not always a one path. Um, no. And is it ever, uh, do you, do, how do you, how do you find out about who is in need or is it many times that who may be in need will come to you or the company themselves and then you, you sort of sit down and, and, and decide whether that would be a, the great, the greatest journey for you to go down, path for you to go down. Yeah. 
So with the with the consulting and with a lot of comp with a lot of companies, most of it is that they identify within their own internal strategy what might best be aligned with the business that they do anyway. So the example right. that I used, for example, food manufacturing, and they support with nutrition and giving food to the local community. Right. Um, so most companies would decide what it is that they were going to work towards. Some just look at, um, you know, in terms of that more direct, like quick, easy hits would just donate to a local charity that focuses on, it could be anything. I mean, there's, there's a really large company in South Africa, which funds local cricket clubs, you know, and you wouldn't see the sort of immediate benefit of that. But when you consider that South Africa is a country that's crime ridden, and kids don't have anywhere to go. It's very easy for them to, to get into a life of sort of gang culture and having a local cricket club that they don't have to pay for where they get fed and they get trained and they sneak in other types of training as well. Um, the impact of that is, is actually quite far reaching. That's extraordinary so, though. Stop and think about that for a second. And I'm sure you have, but we've just learned it. And that is, you start. we start out the show with you coming from South Africa and having to steal eggs in order to be able to live. <laughs> and now you're living somewhere on the outskirts of London. Obviously, you know, you become a, a large city girl and a very successful entrepreneur at that. And now you're taking a look back at your the, com the country that you came from and giving back there. How does that make you feel? That has to be an extraordinary feeling. It really is. And at the same time, it's... It's, I don't know how to describe it. It's a bittersweet. Sort of -edged it's a bittersweet. Yeah. And, and also, you'll probably find the same. The sort of, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. And the more you want to know, you know, the, the bigger the world gets, the bigger the world gets. Yeah. And the more that I discover and the more that I help, the more, you know, and, I, and I'm not saying help like, you know, oh, I'm, you know, and all knowing and come right. down and solve all yeah, problems. Yeah, I, know. I get that. We but, totally get that. But the more that you, you know, the more that you see that you're able to do, and the more you kind of drill down into what what's actually happening, the more you realize needs to be done. Right. And um, and also the more you realize how sometimes there are such good intentions, but it's sort of misplaced just from a lack of understanding of how things actually work. And if we've got time, I'll, I'll just take a few seconds yes, to tell you a very quick story we, about this. We do. So now with, with COVID going on uh, everywhere, every country is hit by it. Um, right. there, there are so many initiatives and sort of COVID response uh, activities and a lot of projects and companies which did have funds for different activities are now prioritizing them for COVID related activities. And in some countries, governments can afford to support and in others, they can't. So in South Africa, um, one of the initiatives, and I, and I actually spoke to a friend of mine um, from university, and she's doing incredibly incredible work at the moment um, with an organization called 2030 Up. And they have a project called Street Kits where they allow for or, or they're starting to create an, a safe space and an environment for people to be able to go to but one of the projects now with COVID taking priority is that in south africa they decided that the wealthier suburbs should try to support the poorer locations like the poorer areas right um and they've matched up these areas and very very well meaning um, people from the, the wealthier communities are dropping off food parcels, um, but dropping off things like kale bread and, um, you know, vegan treats, which are all ex ex probably very, very expensive, but just not what people would usually eat, you know, and, and so they're ending up with a situation where, well, all this amazing, well-intentioned food might in some instances go to waste um, just because of like that lack of coordination and lack of forethought. Um, but you know, there's there's so much more to doing good than just the doing good. Absolutely. And I think taking yeah, sometimes impact, you know, I say frequently just sometimes doing good can be just a smile for God's sake, or holding exactly. the door 
holding the door for someone on the elevator or exactly. giving, a, giving an offhand call. I can't tell you how many times I walk by a woman and say, Oh, I love that top. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. And, I'll just, and that was it. That's the entire exchange. But I, I'd like to think that, you know, I did, I said something honest and she was pleased to hear it. You know, I mean, if I didn't yeah. like the top, I probably wouldn't have said anything, but you know, um, there's, it's really doesn't take uh, very much to be kind. Does it? I mean, it's really, I think we really need to be, you know, it's, it's taking deeper dives into that. I do want to take a deeper dive into success for four. Now it's a book and it's an app on Android and you can get it on the app store. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so Success in Four is, um, it started off as an idea for a book based on science, and it's to help people achieve success, whatever success might mean to them. And, you know, it could mean getting out of bed, it could mean losing weight, it could mean, you know, doing great things in your business or learning something new. Um, so they're all methods based in science, but uh, that are shared in a way which makes it very manageable for people to practice. So four simple steps in under four minutes a day and to build habits for success. Oh, let's hear um, that. One hear of the, yeah, yeah, sure. So one of, you know, one of the big things that I've found through the very many years, both in consulting and reading numerous personal development and self-help books is you read them and you think, wow, that's amazing. And, you know, I'm going to start practicing that and I'm going to practice that. And you read it and it's like, oh, wow, this is going to change my life. Oh, yeah. um, and two months down the line, you just can't fit it in. You know, you just can't, or you forget and you're reading another book and it's, you know, <laughs> it's out the window. Exactly. So the app was really built to, uh, to help people to actually keep on track with that. And it's four areas. We've simplified it completely. The first is around motivation and inspiration. So you get motivational quotes and their bonus uh, on different areas of life, um, personal, uh, sorry, physical well-being, emotional well-being, financial well-being and that sort of thing. Right. Um, and a bonus section which uh, shares um, little videos from people who are in, you know, in the area of work. Um, then there's a daily journal section. And the focus of this is really so that people can remain action oriented. So there's an action list section and you have an area for your notes for the day and your daily gratitude, because I think it's important to, you know, to draw back to that and, and whatever that gratitude might be for the day. Right. Um, there's a, a monthly review section and this is where you basically look at your planning for the, ne the next month, but you look at the month that's been, what some of the obstacles have been, um, you know, what you're planning to do and also keeping perspective and looking at where you might need to pivot. So I think, you know, that's, that's quite important. So that's right. included sure. in there as well. And a vision board section where you can upload images with um, a description. And a lot of people think of this as quite woo woo and uh, think about the secrets and, you know, all of that. It's like, well, you know, if you just imagine it, it's not really going to, it doesn't really happen like right. that. Um, and I always say, you know, it's it's not just, um, you know, see, believe, achieve. It's, you know, see, believe, act and achieve. And uh, high performing athletes, um, you know, really high achievers use visualization as a method to actually achieve. So it's about knowing what you're actually doing with it. It's it's not just about, you know, having a picture. Um, right. It's also about the way. Well, and and the book you obviously can't see, explains a lot more. You, you can't see behind me, but I have two vision boards. One of them is spiritual and the other one is in the physical. So I <laughs> I overachieved on the, <laughs> on the vision boards. I just wish I had time to stop and take a look at them every once in a while, but they are right there. They're right behind us. And they're absolutely Well, if you had the app, it would be on your phone, which I'm sure you're on constantly. And so. there you are. So I do. <laughs> app. And since you're also in my mastermind, we need to be talking about that. Now, listen, everybody, that that um, app and the book can be found on, again, you can get the, uh, the app on Android and the Apple Store and the book on Amazon. It's called Success in Four. And obviously, it's by uh, Nolene uh, Mariapin. I also am going to show you underneath. It's nolenem.com. Am I saying yeah. your last name right? Do I say your last name right? 
It's pronounced any which way. To Mariah me. Penn, Maria <laughs> Penn. Okay, I'm, all right, yeah, whatever. It, I, 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 Maria Penn. There you go. I, it's Maria. To me, it's Nolene. So there you are. Yeah. Um, and I know that you've got an event coming up. I wanted to touch upon that. It's the Global Founders Entrepreneur Summit 2021. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that and um, and how people can find you there. Yeah. So um, if you go to my website, I'll be posting or, or even, you know, uh, find me on LinkedIn. Uh, that tends to be where I am place, mostly. Right. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn or the website and I'll be posting updates. Um, so the app is actually in beta testing stage and will be officially launched uh, in about a week or two. It depends on how, how quickly the final approval comes through right. or mostly on iOS. Um, but um, with the event that's coming up as well, uh, I'll be posting on LinkedIn. So that's going to be in March. And the purpose of the event is, you know, there, there are a lot of entrepreneur summits um, and there is a lot happening around business and there's a lot happening around women in business and that sort of thing. Um, but actually the perspective and the experience of um, founders is a very, very different one. And actually looking at what some of the uh, successes and some of the challenges and some of the ways that we need to shift, especially with everything and the way that the world is, is working right now. Um, you know, how, how do we actually adapt for what's coming? You know, how, how do we prepare ourselves? How right. do we collaborate and how do we work together? Um, right. and, and what are some of the key challenges that we're going to face and how do we look at overcoming them? Um, because it's it's no longer just about marketing. Um, you know, yeah. for a long time that was that was the view. You know, how how well do you market and how well can you sell? Uh, and that's changing. Sure it is. So um, yeah, because the 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 shift has gone from. You know, people just, take just notice. Kind of, people will yeah. buy from companies that are doing, you know, well, as you say, great social impact. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whether it be locally, nationally, internationally, people take they do take notice. They take a look at that, and they're pro they are more propens to patronize and to support a company that will do that. So, it, yeah, what you're doing is extremely true. important. It's it's a really important piece in um in for all of us you know and i mean the more we can all help each other the better off we feel well, marie uh nolene i want to thank you again for being here on the thank show you so and thank, helping me to wake up here this morning in phoenix arizona <laughs> I, thank you uh, so much for waking up earlier than usual to do this i really appreciate it it has been uh it's been a real pleasure to see you because i know get to see you much i hear you more than i see you but we'll be happy to see you again i think it's next monday on the mastermind glad monday. to see you that's there. right yes thank you so much everybody stay tuned because at the top of the hour we've got another phenomenal entrepreneur coming on so you don't want to miss that uh and for now we're going to say goodbye to nolene everybody see you soon bye bye now thank you so much Thanks for listening to this episode of the In the Limelight podcast, intelligent media for the savvy entrepreneur. You can listen to this and all of my podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, and Inspired News Radio. You'll find all of my videos and the In the Limelight digital magazine on clarissabert.com. And don't forget to connect with me on social pretty much anywhere. Stay well until we meet again in the limelight.